Okay, the last bit of noise we want to add to this song is the effects. Now I've put them in here with a redrum instance just into a mixer. And I played with several insert effects, just the default RV7000 there on warm plate mode, which I've dialed in on a few of the sounds, as you can see here, and the delay, just to make them nice and big. Now these effects are great for making sounds really sit into the mix, particularly when there's so much reverb and delay going on with the other sounds as well. So the sounds themselves I've got from various sample packs. My favourite ones are the razor effects and black effects sample packs from Prime Loops. Really cheap and I've used them on 90% of the tracks I've made. They're so versatile. The impacts and reverses are what I generally use them for, like... And like... Takes a while to come in. That kind of thing. And I'll link to those below so you can get them. So yeah, the ones I'm actually using of these are the Crash. This reverse, another less cheesy crash, and this impact. And also, after you're quite done, and also there's this reverse here, the one I've made, just by resampling our kick drum and reversing it. That's a great thing you can do from Reason 5 onwards, and I'll show you how to do that later. So in more detail, crashes in hardstyle are completely different to most genres. Generally in most music, a crash will hit on the same beat as a kick in order to really emphasize a transition or something like that. Now a kick makes a crash hit much harder. Hardstyle, on the other hand, cares not for your well-worn musical tendencies and instead frequently puts random crash samples out on their own. And it always tends to be this exactly the same drum machine-y cheesy crash as well. This one. I have no idea why. Maybe it's an in-joke between hardstyle producers like the Wilhelm scream of Dutch bass music. But I've done them here, just before the drop, to emphasise the vocal a bit. But feel free to just chuck them randomly in the middle of a beautiful breakout. Plenty of authentic hardstyle does that kind of thing. Next, when dealing with reverses, such as this, Make sure you've got the decay gate mode set to 1, which is gate mode. This means that when you stop holding down the note, the sample stops as well. So you know when you hold a brick on a hamster and it begins to squeal and then you take it off and it stops? It's kind of like that. Whereas decay mode is more like when you throw a brick at a hamster and you have no control over how long it squeals for. So that's the reverse, which, which I usually put leading up to a drop or a transition. And after that, I've layered this cooler, less cheesy crash with this impact kind of sound, just to emphasize the bigger transitions a bit more. I've done that here. All these samples in Redrum are triggered by the C1 octave. Just remember that. Useful bit of info. And remember what I said about the lengths of the reverses. Stopping as soon as the bar you're building up to kicks in. And lastly, let's take a look at this resampled kick that I mentioned. Now you see this little button here, the waveform? Start sampling. If you click it, you'll see that it starts recording. Now we don't want that. First we need to root reason into our sample input so we can record our kick drum. So we're going to scroll to the top of the rack and hit tab. So at current we've got the audio inputs 1 and 2 going into the sampling input and these are the vocals, but we want our kick. So let's take the output from the master section instead Get rid of these and take them into the sampling input, just temporarily. So we're going to find a part of the music where the kick is playing. In this drop, for instance, right there, solo it out, so that's the only one playing. And we're going to go back to our region. Let's try it in this slot here. Hit start sampling and play the song. Okay, we've got a couple of kicks there. Now press edit. And this is what we're presented with, this edit sample dialog. Let's crop it, get rid of the first one and get rid of the second one as well, we don't want that. Bring that E to the end and crop. Normalize to make it as loud as it can be without clipping. Then reverse and crop and take a listen. Voila, you just made a reverse version of your kick. So let's tighten it up a little bit. Bring that E right in, crop it. Let's name it, Rev Kick. And don't forget to move the leads back to their original places up the top so you can actually hear the song again. So this one goes here, 
and let's move the audio inputs back into the sampling inputs. Now we can scroll down and take a listen. Sweet! Now this kick is then just drawn in on gate mode as necessary. You can pitch it a bit as well. If you want to have it a bit longer or shorter and you won't really notice it's been pitched so long as you don't do it a ridiculous amount. And there we have it. Some vocals more devoid of meaning than Jersey Shore and some effects that polish off the track more than a fat person locked in a room with a marzipan scale extra set. Tune in tomorrow for day six where I'll explain the arrangement of a conventional hardstyle track, some of those cool fills hardstyle always has that I've added in and a few new melodies I've added. Don't forget to like this video, then click here for that.